the Mavs no longer have the trade exception that expired yesterday, which they had from the Josh Richardson deal. Uh, the sign and trade options for Jalen Brunson, courtesy of Mavs Moneyball. We went through some of those. It appears, you know, giving, getting a guy like Evan Fournier or Julius Randle is going to be too much. What they might be able to pull off is a combination of a Nerlens Noel and a Cam Reddish, or you can get one of an Alec Burks or a or Nerlens Noel, or a combination of a Noel, a Burks, or an RJ Bar an RJ Barrett, and a quickly a Grimes and a McBride in exchange for a Jalen Brunson. There also might be the potential of you throw in, hey, uh, the first round pick that you can maybe get back to recoup some of those assets. So, I mean, I think the main thing is, look, if you lose Jalen Brunson, I think we're all kind of feeling this money might be a little bit too much for a guy that we like a lot, but we're saying, I don't know that he's an all-star. And I think there are those within Maverick circles that wonder how good of a passer is he? He is an okay three-point shooter. He's not an elite defensive player. I don't know that he's worth over $25 million, which is where this is going to mm -hmm. get to. There's a lot of things in New York that are reasons to why I can understand Jalen wanting to go there. You play for your dad. You're able to now work with a guy who used to be your agent. You can be the guy in New York. You can be closer to home where you grew up in the state of Pennsylvania. There's a lot of pros for Jalen Brunson to leave there. But if you're the Mavericks, the biggest thing is just don't let him walk for absolutely nothing. Once you get, once they recognize that he's gone, that may be now. Yeah, I, I believe it already is now. If they know he's gone, then they've got to pull off this sign and trade, uh, just like Golden State did with um, with KD. And you get back D'Angelo Russell and you flip him for something else. You don't even have to take a player that you actually want. You may not even want these guys, this guy that you're going to get back on your team. But if they have, you got to find player with value on the open market who has value elsewhere if you don't want them. Or if it's find somebody that you want to be able to keep who you think makes your team better. Is that Cam Reddish? Is that RJ Barrett? Is that you know, Quigley? Uh, is it, uh, you know, Noel? Whoever, whoever it is, find somebody that you think either has value that you could flip elsewhere again or that you can use. But you got to get something for him. Yeah. Shoot, get one of the 97 picks they just draft. They just the Knicks just got this uh at this draft because they traded out of every pick. Yeah, there's a there's a way to make this work here. Uh and, and I, I believe the Mavericks are probably on the phone with the Knicks trying to work stuff out uh, uh as we speak, uh, because it it behooves the Mavericks and the Knicks need a little help here still to sign Jalen Brunson. They don't they don't have enough cap space at the moment to just sign Jalen Brunson to the four-year, $100 million or $110 million contract that they are reportedly uh, going to offer him. So the Knicks need a little help to do it. And if the Mavericks know that Jalen Brunson is going to the Knicks and there's not much they can do other than pay him like $35 million a year, which they're, they're not going to be willing to do, then it's like, okay, uh, this is the way it goes. Jalen, I get it. They're rolling out the red carpet for you. You go there. But let's, uh, let's make this amicable for both of us. And uh, the Mavericks have the roster spots for it. And so don't let an asset just walk out the building and get nothing for him. I think the Mavericks are too smart to allow that to happen. Hopefully the Knicks are just ready to dance a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out in the coming days. Shifting focus, though, to 10 realistic potential fits for the Mavericks as we get closer to free agency. And Callie Kaplan, who's a friend of the station, was on with KMC last week, did a fantastic job. And she gives us a good list. And it starts off with one that we we pretty much know about, and this might be a foregone conclusion, and it's Goran Dragic, who is playing with Luka right now uh, for their home a country. Shredded Luka. And he really is, man. He or really not. is looking. Well, leaner, leaner. Uh, those but biceps. we did see a bicep. We did see we a bicep. We did see a bicep. He's That's looking true. buff. For the first time in Luka history. We did see a, we did see a bicep. So Dragic is 36 years old. He'd be playing for the veteran minimum. Why the Mavs? It's basically... He's a big fan of Luka. They're best buddies. They play together on the Slovenia national team. He mentored Luka growing up. And I think that this is all about the Luka team morale, right? And, and Eric, you've discussed this, and, and I think we're all on the same team here. This is still all about you want to keep Luka Doncic happy. You mm -hmm. just traded his best buddy, Boban, to Houston, who was a fan favorite. Go ahead and bring in a new best buddy for him. And I still believe, and I know that there's some people that disagree, 
and might believe that Goron is washed. I still think he's a capable player that can give you some solid minutes off the bench, but especially that veteran leadership in the postseason, yeah. I think he can add something for you in those minutes. Oh, I don't think he's washed. I mean, he is old. There's no doubt about that. I don't think he's completely washed. I'd give it a shot, but you know, it depends on what the what the, what the money's going to be and 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 any kind of compensation. But man, I, it's just are we going down the same Euro road again? Another one. You know, it's like this team just that's what they are. The Mavericks are just basically a European basketball team. And that's fine. That's fine. But like, we want to lure free agents in here. It, are 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 Free agents lining up to play with Goran Dragic. You know, I don't even know if they're going to line up to play with Luka Doncic. Yeah, we no, haven't no. seen any proof of, proof of that yet. Nobody is lining up to play with uh, with Goran Dragic. Uh, no, I mean, like they, they, these guys play, and these free agents go to where they have buddies from AAU. That's it, for sure. That's uh, it. We got we got we got we got to be able to get get in in on that man. That that that. If you want free agents, you got to get in. And, with the AAU crowd, yeah, and and hopefully that's something that uh, that Luca will be doing uh, in the in the coming years. The Mavs aren't really in a position right now to no. be able to make a play on any of these big time dudes, anyways. Uh, so right now, hey, getting getting a a Goron to fill out the end of the bench and not really not really have to depend on him much in in the regular season, but postseason, I think he can bring some value on the court to you, and then the off the court value. Is like you said, keeping Luca as happy as possible, and and that is always right at about the top of the priority list. I would imagine for Nico and Mark Cuban and just everybody in the Mavs organization, sure. you got to keep Luca happy. And Boban's gone. Okay, bring in Goran, and and that can kind of mitigate that that friendship loss there for old Luca. Next name at twenty seven years old, shooting guard Gary Harris, who was with the Orlando Magic last year with a salary of twenty point four million. He's expected to get the taxpayer mid level exception this year. And after trading for Christian Wood during the draft process, the Mavs emphasize that they want a two way wing depth player as their next target. Harris happens to be one of the best 3 and D options on the open market this offseason, so he's expected to command significant interest from playoff expectant teams. Gary Harris might be a name the Mavericks are interested in. Oh, Gary Harris. Yeah, I mean, and these are the type of names you're going to be seeing. These, It's not like any... You're not getting a. You're not talking about Bradley Beal. We're not talking about Kevin Durant and all that kind of stuff. Like you're talking about just guys that are here to fill out a roster, have a a specific mm. role for you, and you're getting them at a good number. Like that's that's really where you're at right now, uh, and that's why you don't want Jalen Brunson to leave for nothing because right now you're trying to have you're trying to keep as much talent as you can. And uh, you're not really getting anything at all, even yeah. cap space or anything, if Jalen just leaves. Cannot let him leave for nothing. Like that's that's the number one thing you cannot do. He's you've got to be able to get some kind of compensation for him. You got to recognize he's not going to come back. But I think the Mavericks are in a good place where the, I mean the the roster really only needs. I think even with the loss of Jalen Brunson, but especially especially when he's on the roster, like the the Mavericks have a a strong roster. It's not like you. It's not like, oh my gosh, we still have a massive hole here and here, and we're fortunately have Spencer Dinwiddie. To, yeah, you still have you like your bench is pretty strong right now. Bringing in Christian Wood now, it's just like it provides depth there, uh, and so I, I think you're still in a pretty good good place with the roster. And so the Mavericks just need to find those specific skill sets at the right number mm -hmm. and get these guys in here. So whether it's Gary Harris or name that role player, that's where you're but, at. But is you know no no disrespect to Gary Harris, but. You know, there's also a move the needle atmosphere, you know, at play here. Like, does any does, does Gary Harris move the needle for a Mavs fan? No. You know, Mavs fans were like, well, wait a second. Why would we get rid of Jalen Brunson? Even though that we, we all agree that he's not worth $25, $30 million a year. Right. But I do think that this team needs to add players like they did with Reggie Bullock yet last year, which wasn't a right. move the needle no, it's not addition, a no, it's not. but certainly helped them in the postseason. No, you're right, and and that's that, that's fine, you know. Like, and, and fans will deal with it, uh, and and once they watch the players play and you know see what kind of run they go on in the postseason. But from an off season, from an excitement towards the season standpoint, you know, I'm just talking like if I'm a fan and like I look at this team and and they lose Jalen Brunson, and they replace him with Gary Harris. Oh, what happened here? We just went to the West Finals, and now Gary Harris, right? Who doesn't sound like he sounds like an accountant? Yeah, he does. 
Uh, some of the other names to just throw out there from a center forward perspective, you got Isaiah Hartenstein, who is with the Clippers. Oh, your Jewish brethren. Eight, five, and two while shooting 62% from the floor. Uh, you have Derek Jones Jr., who was with the Bulls they last call year. Airplane mode. Uh, He's only 25. Because he dunks like a monster. Very athletic. JaVale McGee, of course. And then... Because he goes, he goes AWOL for a while. He does. Yeah, he does. Otto Porter Jr. is another name that I've seen circling quite frequently with the Mavs Association. Would be really cheap. Mavs certainly got to see him in the Western Conference Finals. Interesting. Long defender. And there's also uh, Torian Prince and TJ Warren as some other names that could be out there that the Mavs could be interested in, as well as uh, possibly Malik Monk, who's still very young and uh, could also be very cheap and available. And he just had the best year of his career. And he said he's willing to take less to go to the Lakers uh, or to to remain there. Um, but... Yeah, I like the idea of Otto Porter. Uh, I mean, any of these three and D, the wing guys, I think that's what the Mavericks are looking to to add. I don't think they're necessarily looking for a specific Jalen Brunson replacement. I don't think they're trying to duplicate a Jalen Brunson if they lose him. No, you could find a Jalen Brunson in the draft, I think, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Just, you, you know, you can, this draft. For sure, for sure. <laughs> you can develop something like that. But uh, I think what the Mavs want to add right now is probably that more some length on the wing and that does the three and D stuff. I, you know, also real quick, you know, you you got to figure and ask yourself, all right, what what is what is Luca going to view? He's gonna he's watching what's happening, and if he sees they lose Jalen for nothing, he's like, do I trust it? Am I going to trust this front office? Like you know, like they're they knew the player was going to leave, and they didn't they didn't try to get anything for him in a, in a sign and trade. They they weren't creative enough. Like if I'm Luca, I'm looking at everything right now to see, and I'm I am judging every little move they make. Yeah, and that's the thing that the Mavericks have to balance constantly throughout this Luca era is making sure that uh, even just optically it comes across like they are doing everything in their power to make sure that they're building a championship team around. It.